So piti ko po nung sa college. Bakit? Hi guys, welcome back to PT Sesh where we talk about physical therapy and everything in between. If you're new to my channel, I'm Seth Damasco, a licensed physical therapist. And I like pizza. So for this video, we'll be discussing the PT profession and as a program in college, in which I think you should know before entering college. So at first, I divided it between the pros and the cons, but I think it depends on your perspective as well whether you look at this points as a positive or a negative one. And I won't be persuading you if physical therapy is the program for you or not because I think at the end of the day, you know yourself better than anyone. So here are the timestamps for this video in case you need to go back or kung gusto niyo mag-skip dun sa ibang points. Okay, let's go! First point, taking physical therapy as a program in college and as a profession means that you're gonna help a lot of people. If you find helping out others very fulfilling, then maybe this program might be for you. So you'll be handling people who have impairments, limitations in performing their daily activities, and some people who require strength training and conditioning. I discuss more of this in the second episode of PT Sesh. If you'd like to check them out, I will leave a link somewhere here. Second point, so generally you'll be studying the human body, its functions, how we move, and you'll be learning a lot of different conditions. So we need to know this topic since we'll be giving out specific exercises for our patients that needs to be well fit for them. And if you have a great appreciation for the human body and how it works, then this program might be for you. On to the third point. So in physical therapy, you will need to learn a lot of new concepts. After learning your foundation, you will then integrate these in the overall process of handling a patient or a client, from the history taking, to the assessment, to the treatment planning, and to giving out the treatment to the patient. Number four, since most days you'll be taking a lot of quizzes, practical exams, and different kinds of examination. Consequently, since you need to study most of the time, this program will then take a lot of your time. And before, it is for five years, in which the first two years were composed of general subjects that we need to take, such as bio, chemistry, physics, and others. Fifth point, so like what I said earlier, that you'll be helping a lot of people, that means you will meet and talk to a lot of people. Kung ikaw ay mahiyain or awkward, okay lang yan. Take this one as a challenge kasi wala ka rin choice. Kailangan mag talaga kausapin yung patient. And it is also important for you to talk to them since you'll be building up rapport for a good PT to patient relationship. But not sure, these kinds of things are also practiced inside the classroom. So with the help of your professors, classmates, and series of practical examinations. You'll get the hang of it. So let's now go to the professional aspect. Point number six. There is no direct access in the Philippines. So according to RA 56AE Section 12, inhibition against the practice of physical therapy and occupational therapy, in which no person shall practice or offer to practice PT and OT in the Philippines as defined in this Act, without the prescription of a duly registered physician and a valid certificate of registration as a PT or an OT. So what does it mean to have a direct access? It is the removal of the physician referral mandated by the law to access physical therapy services for evaluation and treatment. But of course, there are pros and cons in terms of direct access. From the study made by Rota and Carpio wherein they asked the experiences of 10 physical therapists, PTs in the study appeared to be restricted and bound by the prescription-based referral system that the law regulating PT practice mandates. This system limits their ability to engage in appropriate clinical decisions making, thereby inhibiting their autonomy to practice. Following this, some participants from the non-hospital setting found to have greater freedom in making their own clinical decision. The physical distance they have from referring physicians provided opportunity to make clinical judgments and assert their autonomy in practice. It is also said in the study that in several developed countries, these issues have been resolved through strengthening of professional organizations, advocating for policy revisions, and advancement of professional education. And it is important to have a good physician-to-PT relationship to have an effective and optimal treatment for the patient. So this is a chart showing different countries in the Southeast Asia with or without direct access. On to the seventh point. There's a variety of what you can focus on. Although in the Philippine setting, as of this date, there are no credentialing institutions that grant certification or licensure for specialization, there are hospitals or centers that focus us on certain conditions. Also, in the academic aspect, you can take postgraduate studies such as taking up your master's, doctorate, or even go to take up doctor of medicine. Point number eight. Bukod sa literal na madidraining last three brain cells mo sa kakaaral, meron din tayo natawag na brain dead. Oh, na. <laughs> <laughs> Meron din tayo na brain cells. Dane! 
Drain! Meron din tayong tinatawag na brain drain or the immigration of qualified people from a particular country. And yun, there are a lot of reasons why professionals choose to work overseas. And according to one study, some reasons are higher salaries and better working condition. And from the data given by the Philippine Physical Therapy Association to the World Physical Therapy, as of June 2019, there are 14,610 physical therapists working in the country. And out of 10,000 Filipinos, there are 1 to 5 PTs. And let's go now to the last point, the ninth one. The profession is still young and it's still growing. I think the profession is relatively young, especially in the Philippines, and it opens to a lot of growth and possibilities. If you'd like to be a part of it, kaya tara na sa dating ikaw. And I won't be persuading you. Especially on the research aspect of the profession, clinical practical skills and theoretical knowledge are both necessary components of physical therapy treatment. And PTs agree on the importance of research. And bringing science to clinical practice is required for the development of the PT profession. Kaya okay man wala dun sa kasabing walang use ng research. Also, according to Fetters and Tilson, evidence-based practice promotes a structured thinking process in gathering evidence to support clinical decisions, potentially allowing clinicians to confidently contribute and justify management procedures for effective client care. And we're done. So those are just points that you may want to look out when you consider physical therapy as your program for college. And really, physical therapy for me is a fulfilling yet challenging profession. So did this video help you in some way? What videos should I do next? Let me know your thoughts down below. And if you like this video, make sure to leave a like. And if you haven't subscribed yet, please do if you want to see more. And as always, stay safe and see you guys soon.